Let's take a look at the common progression of disease with COVID-19. A COVID-19 infection can be classified into three stages of increasing severity. The early infection or viral response phase. In this phase, symptoms of upper respiratory tract infection dominate. The pulmonary phase, when the patients develop full-blown pneumonia with all its associated symptoms, and the hyperinflammation phase, when patients develop ARDS, sepsis, and kidney and other organ failure. It's important to note that some patients only have milder symptoms associated with upper respiratory infection, or stage 1, whereas others progress to more advanced stages. Most of the time, infection starts when an uninfected person inhales virus-laden droplets or aerosol into their nose and throat. 47% of the time, transmission comes from a pre-symptomatic person through aerosol transmission or droplet inhalation. 38% of the time, it comes from a symptomatic person through aerosol transmission or droplet inhalation. In 10% of patients, infection can also occur when someone touches a contaminated surface, then touches their face with their hands which contain the virus. And 6% of the time, an asymptomatic person may be responsible for transmission, likely also through aerosol transmission or droplet inhalation. We know that 44% of infectiousness occurs in the pre-symptomatic phase, specifically in the 1-2 to two days before symptoms start. So, pre-symptomatic transmission is contributing greatly to the spread of this epidemic and isolating only symptomatic individuals will not contain the spread. Also note that seven days after symptom onset, there is very little chance that infections will be transmitted according to this publication. Let's take a look at what happens after the virus is transmitted and enters the patient's body. The cells of the nose have a cell surface receptor called angiotensin-converting enzyme 2, or ACE2. This receptor is also present in other organs, but cells of the nose exhibit a very high receptor density. And since the virus is inhaled through the nose, that's where it will likely attach first. So the SARS-CoV-2 virus needs this receptor to enter the cell. Inside the cell, the virus uses the cell's machinery to make numerous copies of itself and to invade even more cells. The median incubation period, the time between infection and the onset of symptoms, is 5.2 days, but it can be as long as 14 days in some cases. If a patient remains asymptomatic 14 days after exposure, the patient is unlikely to develop symptoms. This is why people have been told to self-isolate or quarantine for 14 days. As mentioned before, in most patients, the disease starts with a mild infection with upper respiratory tract symptoms. In some patients, the infection will worsen and enter the lungs and cause pneumonia by the end of week 1 or the beginning of week 2. The terminal alveoli in the lungs are also lined with cells rich in the ACE2 receptors. As the virus enters these alveolar cells, pneumonia develops. White blood cells release chemokines in order to kill the virus-infected cells. Pus, a collection of fluid and dead cells, is left behind and interferes with the lung's ability to transfer oxygen to the blood and CO2 out of it. By this point, the patient will likely have a worsening cough, fever, and rapid and shallow respiration. It is at this stage where most patients with COVID-19 would need to be hospitalized for close observation, management, and possibly oxygen therapy. This pulmonary stage is divided into two distinct phases. Stage 2A is the pneumonia patient without hypoxia, and stage 2B is the pneumonia patient with hypoxia, who will likely require hospitalization and oxygen supplementation. Studies in China and the U.S. suggest that most patients, on average, are admitted to the hospital about a week after symptoms begin. Patients in the pulmonary phase of the disease can quickly progress to the hypoinflammatory phase, where the infection runs wild. These patients deteriorate often suddenly, usually developing acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. ARDS involves inflammation and fluid buildup in the lungs which prevents oxygen transfer from the air to the blood. Blood oxygen levels drop rapidly and the patient struggles harder to breathe. 
ARDS patients usually require mechanical ventilation in the ICU. On average, patients are intubated 14.5 days after symptom onset. Depending on the country and the ICU setting, approximately half of ARDS patients will recover and half will die. How long does it take COVID-19 patients to recover overall? One study of hospitalized patients in Wuhan showed that the median duration from symptom onset to discharge from the hospital was 22 days. And the median time from symptom onset to death was 18.5 days. We'll discuss the details of the hyperinflammatory stage and other complications in an upcoming lesson. That's it for now. If you want to improve your understanding of COVID-19, make sure to register for a free MIT Mastery trial account and check out our CME accredited courses. So stay safe and see you next time.